Hey everyone, Bill, welcome back to our live stream today. We're going to have a doozy for you, and that is our high risk portfolio, not only in Metaverse, but also in gaming, also some of the Rails side of things, because we talk about that quite a bit here on the show. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Let's jump into it today because one of the things that we get most requested, we actually did a poll on this or in one of our videos last week on um, whether or not you would want an analysis of some of our portfolios in the high risk category. Now we've done a high risk portfolio review and reveal before, did pretty well, but I was surprised at actually the, you know, kind of the uptake on it. So you guys are a risky bunch. Let's get out there and We'll dive into it. I want to kind of uh, talk about one of the things that we do before we go into a high risk portfolio. And let me kind of just log in for uh, this. And this is a tool that I use on an ongoing basis. It's called Token Metrics. They are a partner of the show. If you want to check them out, you can click the link below. The thing that I do though within Token Metrics is I can go in and take a look at everything around sentiment, ratings, indices. One thing I like to do is in the area of the ratings. And one of the things that is, I think, key in understanding how to identify projects, early on projects. Now we're gonna have some really early on projects that we'll show you in one of the past portfolios that was a high risk, how they did, and then also our new portfolio for 2022. So we got a lot to unwrap here. What I, I do want you guys to do, make sure and uh, get your questions in the live chat. We'll try to get to those. And also make sure and like the video because this, I think, is one of the ways we get great feedback from you. And it's a, it's a good way for us to kind of get the algorithm up on YouTube. But if you look at the uh, sifting uh, or the filter capability, I want to go with less than 25 million in this particular case. This is the way I use it. I'll apply the filter. And then what it will do is it'll give me a new look right here. So I'm gonna zoom in on some of these just so you guys can kind of take a look. They have this thing called TM grade, which is a combination of a few uh, research components, sentiment, et cetera. We probably should one day try to partner up with them with some of our own sentiment data or score it in here. Because typically what I'll do is I'll look at this, then I'll come back and do a register on our own sentiment data. And if it lines up with the TM score, which you see right here, like open network, TonCoin, um, or if you look at play and like this uh, PAL, these are rating fairly high on token metrics TM grade, then we'll score them on our own. And that's how I identify whether or not we have a project that is getting ready to break out. And that's typically what I use right now. So you've got a little bit of the, you know, kind of behind the scenes look of what we use uh, in terms of a tool set to kind of get things going. Obviously, we have some other, other aspects of what we do, but our own sentiment and amplification scoring system that we use under our CPI, which is the Crypto Power Index. If you want to learn more about that, just go to paulbarronnetwork.com. You'll see a whole slew of stuff about the CPI, how it works, what we do with it, and all that good stuff. And it is really one of the, the key tools we used in building the portfolio you're looking at on screen right now. This was a portfolio that I shared with you guys about two or, yeah, about two months ago. And essentially what I did here is this is one that we had been building over time. These are real numbers of what we invested um, in this portfolio and absolutely just killed it. Uh, Mogul Productions was one that we got into early. It's still actually performing, but I exited that. You can see the profitability. This was up like a thousand percent. Most of these investments are, were between anywhere between $500 and $1,500 per asset. Nabox was one of my killers. Uh, it did 2,100%, and uh, you can kind of see the, the, the potential of where it was. If you have not looked at these and you want to check out our old videos on this one, Seek VR was another one that we invested in uh, and exited it, made ridiculous uh, money on this one. Black Eye Galaxy, one of our early investments in the portfolio, made great money on that one. Communitas or com, uh, Communitas or com, Communities, I'm not sure how they pronounce that. Um, this one did fairly well. Uh, Red Fox, which we still keep in some of our other uh, gaming portfolios, uh, did excellent. Vulcan Forge, early access on that. Unipilot did pretty good. Metaverse uh, Index is still flying. Uh, we've got a little bit of Super Farm activity, which is down quite a bit. And then over, we actually did some good stuff with OVR. Place War I still keep. 
in other portfolios. And then let's take a look at Space Swap. This was another one that did fairly well. I should have sold it a long time ago. Uh, missed the window on that one. Uh, v Empire also missed the window on that one. And this goes into some of my, of my dogs that I did not do great on. So not always will we win on these. And that's the one thing that I want you guys to be aware of when we present these portfolios like this. These are market movers. Market movers are very simple. We'll put a lot of research into this. We'll do our own sentiment analysis, apply our own amplification methods to it. And then we'll basically do our research, but it's not investment advice. It's designed to get you guys going in the right direction, hopefully for how you want to build a portfolio that matches up with what you guys are looking to do. So let's get into the reveal of, this is our 2022 portfolio. So I'm starting a new portfolio brand new from scratch this week that's getting ready to launch. Now we will be adding to this. So I want to know in the comments or in the um, chat, what would you add to this portfolio? Okay. And just let me know if you've got something, I'll go research it. We'll pull our data together, put our team on it. And if it's something that's, you know, potential, then on our next video, when we do an update video of this, it might be in there. We'll definitely let you guys know. Let's jump to this portfolio. I want to start off with Remark. Now, Remark is, I think, one of those projects that, uh, and again, I bought this one a little bit early. So as you can see, I purchased 200 of those. And, uh, and it's performing mainly because this was my, like my kickoff uh, token for this particular portfolio. But Remark is an excellent project in the sense of what they're trying to do, which essentially is an NFT engine that is designed to build assets for the metaverse. And the idea behind what they're trying to do, I think when you look at tokenization of NFTs and the potential of brand involvement in the metaverse, Remark is going to be one of those project engines that are going to be huge. And this is why I'm in it. Remark the price. Let's take a look at where they are on the year to date. You can kind of see it had this nice little run up back here in November when we purchased it. And it's had this awesome move. Now the question is, Paul, would you buy that today? Yes, this is one that I am going to be adding to. Again, it's down from its all-time high right here at 63.44. I'm looking for not only dollar cost averaging in on this one, but also looking for a potential dip. If there is a dip in the market, this is one of those that I would add to my portfolio here on my high-risk side. So Remark is number one. Number two is Game Starter. Game Starter is part of an ecosystem. And if you guys haven't checked out Game Starter, uh, there are some other projects like uh, Dark Frontiers and a, a handful of others that are coming. So I think Game Starter is, again, one of those projects that starts to put together all of these launch pad elements of some of these great games. And this is uh, a project that I like a lot. I just put in a thousand of these. So we, we put 1500 bucks in this one. We'll see how this one does out over time. Ad Shares is another one that I want to show you. Now, Ad Shares is a different it's a different play on it. So AdShares is Web3 protocol for metaverse space monetization. Think of it from a marketing standpoint, okay? And advertising in general in the metaverse. When you look at how advertising ecosystems will eventually, unfortunately, pollute the, <laughs> the metaverse, there's gonna be a winner. So who is gonna be the Google Ads of the metaverse? And I'm not saying that AdShares would be the Google Ads, but they definitely on the right trip or right track here, and if you look at their current market cap, 50 million, this again, one of those scenarios that I always watch is, are they too big? Some of the uh, partnerships and also options that, of where you guys can get in on this, whether it's over on ApeSwap, I would grab it on uh, PancakeSwap um, in reference to that. But you see all of the different uh, components in here. Notice this little logo right here. It's called IAB. This is the Internet Advertising Bureau uh, standards that pretty much governs the how advertisements are put onto the internet. So everything from a banner size to the specification for a podcast ad, all those kind of things are actually governed by uh, an in, or a, a nonprofit called the IAB. And the IAB already sees this coming for them being involved in what's happening over here at AdShares. Definitely a good one. Let's take a look at the chart. You can kind of, again, year to date, big run up, nice big pop right here in early uh December, and we had this massive fall off. This could still slide. Again, this is why it is a high risk. And again, remember, let me kind of reiterate this. When I put a high risk portfolio together, 
nine times out of 10, I'm looking to lose all my money. Now, granted, the one we just built in the Q3, Q4 of last year, we made ridiculous gains on it. I think it was a 10x gain portfolio overall once we were all said and done. Um, that's great. Those are the kind of gains we want, but we are anticipating that most of these projects will not perform. But we see some in here that are absolutely going to go crazy. So that's the key with high risk. You put a little in a lot of projects and you let them kind of germinate a little bit and then bam, you get one and there's a 10x. Maybe you get something goes 100x like Mogul or maybe you get something like um, Nabox, which uh, went up like 2,000% on us. So those are the kind of wins that are timing. Timing is everything. Anytime you see these kind of big, huge dips like this, that's timing. Let's get back into uh, another one, which is Network. Uh, and you guys, have, you've heard us talk about a little bit about Network. I just bought a new uh, group of these today because of where it's priced currently. Uh, that one, of course, I put in 300 of those, so about 1100 bucks on that one. UFO Gaming, I know that's not Super risky to most of you, but some of you may look at that mainly because of the price point. And and remember, UFO has had a really roller coaster ride, and I think that is another category of when you look at projects that can really kind of advance up. I want to jump back to Network real quick, just so because I know many of you are probably saying, "Well, what is it?" Uh, so, looking at Metaverse or Network in general, you've got two things that kind of come to play here, and I think when we see the evolution of how VR, AR will work in the metaverse. That I know there's some argument as to whether or not we will see that because I think, remember, you got to look at what Facebook is doing, excuse me, Meta is doing. They're going to spend a billion dollars on this. They're going to get to a scale in which it ramps up. Now, there's going to be a lot of companies that are either cottage industry uh, businesses that will come up in and either one, be acquired by Facebook or Meta and or be copied. So the question is, who gets the acquisition? If you go in and look at their recent acquisitions, I would recommend that you do this. You can just wiki this. Go over and look at, at Facebook's acquisition since 2019. You'll notice that it's almost all meta and gaming platforms. They've been planning this little move for a while, and all of their acquisitions or acquihires have been done in this area. So I think Network is one of those projects that potentially could go in that direction. So. Back to my list here. Uh, UFO Gaming, again, another gaming project that I think is definitely coming up the ranks. It, along with what's happening over at Sin City. Let me show you about this one. Sin City, again, this is another metaverse gamification. And I think because of just graphic elements, what they're trying to do overall around the game itself, this is just another one of those risky bets of where I think this one is. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Grand Theft Auto, but not with cars, uh, but more the mob. So it's it's a great, you know, look, the graphics are amazing. Question will be, how does the team roll out? And what do we see in terms of uptake when this game starts to roll out on that one? So that's a good one. Just grab that one also today. Uh, Veracity, it's been on my list. I'm, I'm kind of up and down on Veracity. I, and I was a question mark of whether or not I want to start this portfolio with it. Uh, but it is one that I've, I've looked at um, in kind of moving. I want to kind of get you guys' input on this, though. If you had three games that you wanted to add to this, talk to me about what they would be. If you like something like, I, I know not a Star Atlas, but what are the three games that you would add to this portfolio that are either early stage, very early stage, or potentially like maybe it's not, big time won't have a token obviously, but if you were just, just in general in the chat, um, if you were looking to add three tokens or three projects to a list like this, and this could be kind of off the token side of things and think of it on the NFT investment side of things. It could be real estate, could be all those kind of things. Risky, super risky, lots of risk because lots of risk pays off. Uh, the last one on this list is Chronicle. Now, Chronicle is interesting because this is, again, playing into the strengths of what we're seeing in digital collectibles. So um, I look at it this way. If you look at somebody winning in the space outside of Vivi, and I've talked about this quite a bit on the show about Vivi, because Vivi is just, in my opinion, is going to be the, you know, it's going to be the home run. 
the tie into Immutable, I mean, there's so many things it plugs into this perfectly. But if you look at what Chronicle is trying to do, digital collectibles, and we see this coming across from the big brands, because there will be a lot of brands that eventually start to tokenize their brand. And that, I think, will be a key element, that there's a handful of players that are in this space right now. Chronicle is one of them. Let me show you their chart. And we'll kind of jump back to this one. Again, this one had year-to-date, and I had uh, this run-up in September when they launched the token. Had another little run-up here in the end of November. And then, boom, this thing has fallen to the floor. So you're thinking, Paul, geez, that's got a lot of red in the water there. This is the point. If we're looking at projects and you see sentiment starting to rise, which is one of the reasons that I looked at Chronicle, I saw sentiment data starting to ramp up on this one. And we're seeing a little bit of a rise right here since the 23rd, just the last couple of days, it started to move. But this is the one that has its own full discounted, it's all the way down below. You, you won't be able to buy this much lower. Now people will say, oh, well, great, that might be going to zero. Again, this is a high risk portfolio. Could it go to zero? Sure, it could. It could go to absolute zero. But what I think with Chronicle in terms of how they're trying to amplify what's gonna happen in the metaverse and also in NFTs and utility aspects of NFTs, these guys have a potential to make a run at it. And again, remember, 2022, I think we're gonna see a lot of gaming companies, metaverse companies, and maybe even a handful of Rails companies, meaning the uh, architecture that runs the metaverse, that, that will eventually run the metaverse, things like Remark, uh, things like, um, a, you know, if you look at, uh, what's the other one that I'm trying to think of? Um, AR, Arweave, yeah, Arweave. So many of those that are perfect for acquisition or at least their tech to be acquired. So we may see some of that get rolled up into either bigger projects or in to Web 2.0 companies. Because remember, Web 3, Web 2, quite a bit of difference. There's going to be a big transitionary point between Web 2 and Web 3 because you're going to need developers that understand Web 3. Most likely, the guys who have been building on uh, Web 2 stack is going to be a little challenging for them. So that marriage could be huge for developer communities in a lot of these bigger companies. That's companies like uh, Facebook, Meta, Apple, Google, you, you name it. Maybe even Amazon who really might start jumping into this. Remember, whoever's got the biggest pockets because they're going to start pouring dollars into this as we see this start to move out. Gaming companies, I'm still curious as to whether or not AAA gaming will really roll into this Area. So I want to get a lot of that going at it. We'll do a quick poll too. I want to get your ideas on what you guys are investing in for 2022. The poll is this, and then we'll answer some questions. Um, are you more interested in altcoins? Are you more interested in metaverse or gaming? So altcoins, metaverse, gaming. And then outside that in the fourth would be DeFi projects. So those would be the four categories, and, and Metaverse could also include NFT, so, you know, bunch up in there. We'll have four of those. We'll try to get the poll back answered uh, before we exit out of that for you guys. Let's get into a couple of elements here, uh, and don't forget, remember, when you guys are looking to, um, you know, to jump in on the diamond circle, one thing to do is to go over, and this is something I think a lot of people have been asking me about. I, I get a lot of uh, both Twitter uh, DMs and emails, is the diamond circle is really simple to join. It, it, it's just gonna click this join button, it's gonna create a little uh, form. Let me see if it's gonna give that to you if I go right to it, yeah. So this is a real simple form, you'll submit that. And then up here in the top right is your login. Once you've fill this information out, it's gonna send you an email. And that email is just gonna give you a little temporary password, which you can change once you, that you've logged in. So once you've logged in, I'm gonna log into that real quick. And uh, we'll go to PBN. Um, and this one is easy because once you're logged in, now you see this screen right here. And you can enter the diamond circle, whatever we've dropped last, will show up there. And let me make sure we don't get that audio on there. This was our last one, which was our sandbox analysis. If you guys haven't checked this out, it's a PDF that you can download. It's fully available right here. It's free. And it goes into a lot of research on sandbox. 
So these are the kind of things that are available to Diamond Circle members. It's only available in the Diamond Circle. We're doing the same thing with token analysis, and, and we're, we're ramping those up. I know I've been saying it for a while, but it takes a lot, but we are going to get it. We've got a new uh, model of how we're going to send you guys token analysis, and it's a great place for you to give us feedback and let us know on how that might go. Let me jump to a couple of questions before we get to our poll results, because I want to kind of get you guys' input. I know there's a bunch of these um, are uh, going. So, all right, so let's go to the Super Chat here. Uh, Equilibrium Games, EQ, Elysian, ELS. So these are good ones. Um, Casino Coin, I've heard, you know, we ha actually we had somebody trying to shill that one a little bit on us, I think. And then uh, Luke, what are you saying? All these are pumping up. I like that. Coins, uh, too many gaming in Metaverse. I would agree with you there. This is a high risk uh, portfolio, Luke. So high risk is, you know, it's kind of high risk. Uh, let's go uh, to Waifu Monkey Ball. I like that one. Uh, so that one, we weren't really on top of Monkey Ball in the sense of loving it, but it started to recover a bit. So I'm kind of interested to see how Monkey Ball is going to play out. It may go very well. Geopoly, that one we've had on Mion, uh, Omion. Uh, Geopoly, we've had that on our list before. It's not in this portfolio. We may add it to it. So it might be one that I want to look at. Um, and let's go with uh, Age of Tanks, a uh, good upcoming game. Okay, I'm going to look at that one, Sky Limitless. Let's take a look at that one because I think, again, what I do with high risk is these are as edgy as I can get with exception of a handful like Remark, things of that nature. But a handful of these are super high risk and will continue to add to this portfolio. Remember, we're utilizing token metrics to help us identify these under uh, 25 million in their market cap. Then we start looking at sentiment data and that kind of stuff. So that's how we kind of uh, pull all these in. But I'm definitely gonna look at the list. We'll go back through the chat uh, log here so I can make sure and pull some of these in. Um, what about Dexport? Okay, there, there you go, Jody. Um, all right, so I, I invested in Dexport. We invested in Dexport in our last high risk and we lost just ridiculous amounts of money on it. Um, it didn't do well for us. So just, just so you know. I think we're going to get the, uh, uh, the poll coming up. Looks like the guy's got it coming up. All right, so what do we got here? All right, so altcoins, 42% of you are going to the altcoin route. Metaverse, 33%. Gaming, 15%. And DeFi, 8%. So, wow, that's interesting. 235 votes on this one uh, right here. So, altcoins doesn't surprise me. One thing we do that you guys should check out is our top 20 altcoins. And our top 20 altcoins is sentiment ranking. So, it's looking at the very specific things that you like to see, and that is what altcoins are moving up the ranks that potentially could be early for a nice little pop. We've called it multiple times, everything from, I mean, you name them. We've gone through them. Helium, Polygon was early. We've got projects all around the, the Polkadot chain. Go check that video out because it's a good one right there in terms of top 20. And we do these top 20 analysis, the sentiment analysis often. So we keep those in there. Uh, Troy, so Animoca Brands, uh, definitely a lot of those projects uh, are on the list for us to acquire. This is our first dabble in this, in this particular um, metaverse and high risk portfolio. So be on the lookout. We're going to do more videos in January and February, probably maybe close this out the end of Q1. I'll kind of take a look at the high risk status. Um, we just did a story on uh, Zillica and their kind of entry into the metaverse. Uh, matter of fact, they reached out to us. We probably will end up trying to get them on the show. Um, that's an interesting. Bullish on uh, Phantom Galaxy. Don't know that one. That one would be one I need to look at a little bit deeper. Uh, let's take a look also. All right, here we go. Uh, Matt Wilcox, uh, decimated and did you buy any big time space? Yes, we bought a bunch of big time space. So, and if you guys don't know about big time space, check out our video because it's a good explanation of what big time is doing. They had been selling a VIP access passes, much like if you think about it with the early access passes for Sandbox. Um, has the same kind of scenario. Those things, I think, tripled in value. Digital assets, now we're talking about off-token, uh, but digital assets and then NFT space, if you don't 
understand a lot about the big time. What you have to use this particular space element to be able to actually play the game. So those kind of assets are going to continue to you know two x, three x, five x, and we've already seen that. Just they had their space sale last week, and it's already seen some pretty big move, moves there. All right. Uh, okay. Yes, UFO. Let's go, Terry Ball. UFO gaming token and price make it look like a joke for crypto investment. You know, that is the whole point behind it, Terry, is that when we go with these high risks, we want to see some of those kinds of tokens on the list. The last one that did that for me was Nabox. Nabox took $1,000, $1,200, turned it into about $23,000. So I'm willing to take those risks on those kinds of projects when there seems just a glimmer, a glimmer of hope. So just be on the lookout for that. Meta VPAD, Sky. Uh, Limitless, yes. Another one that we we talked about on the show, definitely like that one. Wilder World should be in this list for um, edgier uh, game projects, but it's a little bit more on the upper side, mainly because of its market cap. And you know, but definitely an interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, geez, man, you guys are coming on crazy. Uh, Burr Trex One thoughts on Omi? Omi is, man, we love this project. I love the the. Uh, potential of what's going to happen with Ecomi and where that's going just because of the partnership with BB and you know what IMX is doing, Immutable X. Uh, all of that is good news for uh, Ecomi and you're going to see a lot of growth in Ecomi. In fact, it's in one of our other portfolios. We've got, we just dropped uh, another video that was our portfolio that was our um, top tier then I have one that is a ones to watch and Ecomi is in that one. Uh, so if you want to see that video, check back tomorrow. We're going to have the ones to watch video out for you. It'll get into all that good stuff. All right. Von Ryan, uh, do you think Matic will survive when ETH 2 comes out? That's a really good point and question. This gets into a lot. I don't want to go segue too much into ETH, but um, as you guys know, I've talked a little bit about ETH in the sense that I'm concerned with the ability for ETH to, one, keep the developer community at bay. Now, granted, they still have the massive aspect of first mover. And Polygon is in a really good position. I think Matic overall potentially has... Yes, I do. Quick quick answer is yes. I think Matic is going to still be a player even, even when and if ETH rolls out. Remember, when ETH rolls this out, they are literally changing out an entire blockchain. Imagine the work behind ETH 2.0, changing out an entire blockchain, all the integrations, all the partnerships, all of that has to be swapped. That's why ETH 2.0 is a massive, massive jump. Polygon is doing, going to do very well on partnerships, integrations, because they're already there. So that's why I might say. Super chat coming in from Gary Stu. All right, what do you think about buying land in, in crypto voxels? The, uh, the, the mining which has appeared, scarcity island, and rumors of a token coming out of air. Okay. Any kind of land in the metaverse right now, I'm, I'm willing to invest in, even in some of the high-risk projects like crypto voxels. Uh, I would say that is one of the edgier projects, but I do like anything that is starting to push out land, just like what I talked about with Sandbox, which I still think, even though it's ridiculously priced right now, that, I think, is still going to be a big gain for the marketplace. We'll probably see land coming out in Axie. We'll see land in a lot of these new games and, and games. You look back at Place Wars with Placidonia. There's just so many opportunities here. And land is the first option for digital NFT of being able to jump in on any of these because you don't really know all the use case applications that are going to be able to be used for a lot of these kinds of land projects. All right. Can you do a deep dive? This is coming from Rajan. Uh, can you do a deep dive analysis video on some of the upcoming guilds, namely Blockchain Space, Avocado Guild, AAG, AGB? Those are good ones. Um, you know, we did a, a gaming guild. It's good to know that you guys are interested in gaming guilds because that is something that I think 2022 may be an interesting, um, an interesting play for gaming guilds because we're going to see more and more money coming in and it is a safer bet for some investors is gaming guilds when you're investing in companies who are investing in the game function rather than the project. A little different because then you own digital assets, maybe you're doing you know, scholars over on you know, Axie, et cetera. 
those are the kind of aspects I think, and, and plus the, the projects that kind of have those real-time dashboards, all that kind of stuff is coming and we see more and more of those. We did a, a nice gaming guild video, you should check that one out. Yield Guild Games was my top pick out of that, but that all, also had Unix in there, many others that were coming uh, as well. Another soup chat coming in, uh, you should take a look at Cypher. You know, that's, that's another one that we actually have on the list, so that's a good call. Cypher is on the list. I may add it to this one because it's one we have been watching and we ran some sentiment data on Cypher early last week. Liked what I was uh, seeing, but usually on projects that are like that a little bit early is I want to see if the sentiment holds over a period of time. Usually anywhere between five to 10 days, if we continue to see sentiment holding, it typically means there is a community around it and the community usually can help, you know, obviously drive price, price action. That's the whole key behind all of this stuff. All right, guys, you are listening in over on the podcast right now, maybe. If you are, you just missed an awesome live show. The idea is to get you over here on the YouTube channel. You subscribe, give us the likes below. We also give you up uh, information on the Diamond Circle, which is where you're going to get not only assets and digital insights on what's happening in blockchain, but it's also where we do giveaways, big giveaways. And we're going to continue that through 2022. Lots of community giveaways, including NFTs. We have some big stuff planned on NFTs, so you definitely want to uh, stay tuned for all those. If you guys have an idea for a show, drop it in the comments below after the live. And of course, hit me up on Twitter, at Paul Barron. Well, guys, we'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.